Welcome to a tutorial video on Twine. In this video, I'm going to show an example of saving an inventory working with the save game and load game macros within Parlor. So we have three macros available to us when we work with save game data. And as a quick review of save game data, I'm talking about data that is saved within a web browser. Keep in mind that we can't access individual files within a web browser because that would be a security risk. However, we can save data in the web browser itself. And this is what Harlow does. So we have the three macros, saved games, collection of all games, saved game files, that is, if they exist, and again, file is a little more virtual. We have save game, which we can save to a particular name to then later retrieve that value, and load game, using that name to then get back to that value. So within all of these, we generally want to check to see if we can save games. Does any saved games exist? We can save the game and then load the game. So in my particular example here, I've created a kind of auto-save system. As part of that, right here in the start passage, I'm checking to see if saved games contains inventory, which is what I'm naming my save files or save slots as part of this example. So if it does, I give a link to load the game and loads the game based on that right here, name for value or name value pairs. So if inventory exists, then we immediately load it. And if it doesn't exist, then none of this is shown to the player reader at all. And the reason why I have this up is because for each chapter right here, I update right here the chapter to whatever the corresponding number is, and then I immediately save the game as an auto-save feature. So in case the reader or player stops or the computer shuts down or they just walk away from the computer, shut everything down or put it to sleep and want to come back, they will always be restored at the start of a particular chapter. Something to keep in mind when we work with save game and load game within Harlow is that we're always restoring exactly back to that point in history and whatever story-wide variables exist. So on that note, I have set up over here a passage called variables with the start of tag. Start of tag is one of a number of different tags that have important meaning to Harlow. The startup tag will be on any passage that will be run before the starting passage. So I'm setting up a story-wide variable called inventory as a data map where it has string values to Boolean values, so true and false. And I set chapter to zero. So when the game starts, sword and shield will be false and chapter will be zero. But as a reader or player makes their way through the story, it will be auto-saved as it goes. So if they ever return to the beginning of the story, right here, the starting passage, and inventory exists, which means they've made it at least into chapter one, then they can, if they want to, jump right back to that spot. Let me show you how this works. So if I build and play, you'll notice because this has already been played before, we could jump back in, but I'm gonna skip that right now. So chapter one, do you pick up the sword? I'm gonna go no. Chapter two, pick up the shield, no. Chapter three, you do not have a sword, you do not have a shield. Okay, I'm gonna close this, and then we're gonna jump right back in. This time we're gonna load game, and it's gonna send us right back here to chapter three, which is where we left off. So I basically stuck the, the player or reader right here. You do not have a sword, you do not have a shield, but I can always undo. So let's undo right here. This time I'm gonna pick up a shield, and now this time, I'm gonna to go to chapter three. So we do not have a sword, but we do have a shield and it auto saved. So if I jump back in and reload, we'll jump right back in where we were based on both the history and the data. So you may not want necessarily this undo and redo functionality, but you have it available to you. Now I'm gonna show something a little bit weird. I'm gonna undo here and I'm not gonna make a choice and I'm gonna come out and then I'm gonna replay and reload. And notice we are right back at the beginning of chapter two. So something important here that this example points out, the saving happens at the beginning right here, immediately into the corresponding passage. Save game inventory for chapter one and also for chapter two and chapter three. So we can jump back to that beginning of the chapter or that beginning of the section of the story. But if they've made a choice and they progressed, it will then save at the beginning of the next section. And all of these though, we are saving inventory as we go, which is a great example of how to create an auto-save system within Harlow. We set up some initial variables, 
potentially using startup or some other setup right here of everything we want. Then as a reader or player progresses, for each time we want to go ahead and create an autosave, then we create that autosave. When they return back to the story, right here, the starting passage, we give the ability, if the save slot or save file exists, to load back exactly where they were again, jumping ahead to the corresponding chapters. And then for each chapter, we just update one of the story-wide variables and save the game, update and save, update and save as we move through the game. And whenever the player returns, they can jump right back to that corresponding section, or in this case, chapter based on the passages. So this requires, again, a little bit of understanding how the three macros we use within Harlow work, saved games, which is just a collection of any save files, if they exist, save game, which allows us to save the current history and story-wide variables within a story in Harlow, and load game, which loads right back to that corresponding point. For all of these, we both basically work with save slots or a save name. I've used inventory for this particular example, but you could use the name of your story if you wanted to do that. And then, to see if it exists before we load it, we use saved games, contains whatever that save slot is, whatever we're calling some type of string data, and then we just load it back if it exists, and it will load them right back to that part. So here's how we can create an auto save system within Harlow using saved games, save game, and load game macros within Harlow 3.3. Thanks for watching.